Hey y'all, I'm Derek. Welcome to Bad Movie Fry Night. If you've been watching this show for a while, you may remember back in my Hard Rock Zombies episode, I said it was Menahem Globus who was the more artistic, if you can call it that, of the Golan Globus team up. I was half right. It's actually Menahem Golan. I do a lot of research for these episodes, but I will be the first to admit, names always get me mixed up. So I admit it, I misspoke, my bad, sorry. So now we're going to give Menahem Golan his dues. His work sucks! Why am I going through all this? Because today we're talking about the Cannon Group. The Cannon Group has actually been around since the late 1960s. In their beginning, they were simply the American distributors of Swedish softcore pornography. By the early 70s, the group began producing their own mainstream films, but went bankrupt due to a string of box office flops. That's when, in 1979, Israeli cousins Menahem Golan and Yoram Globus, both producers of low-rent sex romps in Israel, bought the company for a pittance and changed the focus to exploitive low-cost B-movies. As I said before, Menahem Golan liked to consider himself artistic. He wrote and directed several movies for the company before he left in 1989. This is the first movie he not only directed, but wrote for the company. And it's a musical called The Apple. It makes no sense, so I'm going to make it a little bit more fun. We're going to make fried apple pies today, but before that, I took 64 ounces of apple juice. I heated it over the stove with about four tablespoons of cut up ginger to infuse the ginger flavor. I took it off the heat after about half an hour, let it cool, and then added a fifth of whiskey. So now what we got is spiced apple jack. And the reason I made that is because we're going to have a little drinking game. You see, musical numbers are supposed to A. Add world building B. Add characterization C. Be earned, as in this character deserves to have his emotions expressed through song and D. Be good. If any of the musical numbers in this movie don't add up to at least two out of four, we're going to take a shot. So let's get started. So we get our opening number. Hey, 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 it's the well, that didn't take long. Okay. An opening number is supposed to set the tone for the rest of the film, giving us a look into the world of the story. It's also supposed to add some character to the singers, and be good. This is a generic, bland, boring disco song. So come on, take your shot, y'all! During all this, we meet Mr. Boogaloo, a talent agent who apparently runs the world, and is looking forward to his group winning this talent show they're participating in. However, we learn he basically has enough clout to do whatever he wants, so it doesn't make any sense why he's worried about this particular talent show. Seriously, dude, get your priorities straight. So let's start on this pastry. What I did was sifted together two cups of all-purpose flour and a teaspoon of salt, and then cut two sticks of butter into it. Now, slowly, I'm adding a tablespoon at a time of ice-cold water. Make sure that it's ice cold so that the butter does not melt. Then, when it's moistened enough to hold its shape, we're going to form it into a ball, wrap it in cling film, and then let it rest for about an hour in the fridge. So, after the first number, we get introduced to our protagonists of the film, Alfie and Bibi, a couple from the boondocks, who are introduced through a terrible love song that doesn't add characterization or is any good. You're the light within my darkness. Jeez, again already? 
Anyway, Mr. Boogaloo sabotages their number, then invites them to his apartment where he continues to berate Alfie but showers love on BB. After he makes a point of mentioning that everyone will now wear a sticker his company makes, his son begins to woo BB with, what else, a song. You made for me. Well, this song doesn't add any characterization, it doesn't world build, and it sucks. Take a shot. Woo! Looks like Operation Pass Out's a go. So let's start on the stuffing. In this pan, I've got four small peeled and cored apples. To that, I'm adding about a cup and a third of white sugar and about a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. We're just going to stir that around a bit, let it get all coated. Then, we're just going to cover this and let it cook on medium heat until all the apples are nice and soft. Then we're just going to mash it into a very chunky applesauce. So, Alfie and BB leave the party, only to go back to Mr. Boogaloo's office the next day to sign a contract which Alfie has doubts on. While they wait, there's a musical number that does add some world building, but it isn't earned, doesn't add any characterization, and is bad. Well, Lever, you've lasted so far. Finally, they make it up to the office to sign the contract, and Alfie has a vision where they're in the Garden of Earthly Delights. And there's another song. Magic apple, mystery apple, take a little ride. Let well, at least the liquor's good. Woohoo! Cast iron stomach, how I do not regret you. So let's go ahead and stuff our pies. Now, I had to freeform mine because I don't have a cookie cutter, but normally what you do is take a four inch diameter cookie cutter and just cut little circles. Then, we're going to give these a loving spoonful of our stuffing, seal it with some water. and just let them dry. So, Alfie storms out. Then Mr. Boogaloo has his turn at a song that... Yes, I know how to be a master. Do I need to explain? Anyway, there's a montage of BB getting into shape, followed by a... <laughs> Why am I alive? Okay, so we find out there's a new law saying everyone has to get one of those stickers from earlier in the film, and then we get Alfie singing another song. She walked away and was trapped in the web of their lies. And after Alfie is turned down to record the song, we are informed it's the National Exercise Hour, and we get about three minutes of people punching the air to another terrible song. Hey, 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 hey. Just as an aside, are we supposed to believe that the entire nation takes an hour break to mandatorily exercise? You can't even get two people to agree what to have for dinner on a normal day. And after that, Alfie goes to find Bibi, only to find her under lock and key, and gets beaten up by the reject Roller Brothers from Rock and Rule. Oof. Sorry, um... I think the Applejack's kicking in. Well, the pies are stuffed, sealed, and they're drying, so let's make some icing to go on top. In this bowl, I've sifted a cup and a half of um, icing sugar. And to that, I'm going to add three tablespoons 
of ice water, one at a time, mixing in between, just until it's nice and viscous. <laughs> viscous. Anyway, there's another song between Alfie and BB, and just trust me. It's not good. Doesn't add characterization. Not even real world building. You see what this movie does? It makes people all blurry. Well, Alfie's landlady tells him to just go and get BB. And so he does, going to a party where drag queens on parade, here we come, to argue with Boogaloo to let BB out of her contract. Now, there's another musical number right here. But for decency, I'm not going to show you. Just trust me when I say, take a shot. <laughs> well, Alfie sees BB in flagrante delecto and ends up leaving the party, only to find his way into a commune of hippies run by a guy named Mr. Tops. Whew. Talking's thirsty work. So right now we're frying our pies. Um, we're just going to let them fry at a high heat until they're nice and golden brown. Then we're going to move them to a pan lined with paper towels to let them dry. After they're dried, we're going to goo them up with all that nice icing we just made. So, the next morning, BB is whisked away by another one of Boogaloo's artists to go find Alfie. And they have another... Suddenly I'm not the same. <laughs> Do you even need to ask? Well, after that, BB finds Alfie with the hippies and... Light my way, child of love. Thank God this movie's almost over. And in the end, Boogaloo shows up with a warrant for BB's arrest. But BB and the rest of the hippies are saved literally by Deus Ex Machina, where Mr. Tops shows up in a Cadillac in the sky and shepherds them to another planet to live in peace. Wait. This was a rapture movie? What? Seriously, what? This whole movie was set up as a sci-fi star is born and ends up as left behind? We had no setup for this. Sure, there were scenes where Boogaloo had horns like the devil, but those were only from Alfie's point of view and when he was either under duress or intoxicated. That could easily have been taken as simple psychological stress and not as part of the actual storyline. This ending doesn't make sense in a contextual continuity or story standpoint. And it just ends, just like that. So now that that's finished, let's finish up these pies. We're just going to place them on a nice little platter and let everybody take them as they want. And we're also going to give each of our guests a shot glass so they can play along with the game. So final thoughts on this movie. It's safe to say this movie is terrible. It's shot horribly. And during the music videos, it feels like the director wanted a steady cam, but couldn't afford it. So he just pretended. The music is awful, and the songs just drag out the plot. The casting makes no sense, as in we're supposed to believe an obvious Australian is from the boondocks of Canada, and the story makes no sense at all. There's no reason for it to be set in the far future of 1994. This was made in 1980, so I can forgive them on that point. Other than the fact Menahem Golan thought it would be cool, but is it worth the watch? Definitely. This movie deserves to be seen just because of how random all the choices were in creating this film. Why was it set in 1994? Why was disco so big? Did Boogaloo only sing a song about being a master because he sort of looks like the 1980s era Doctor Who master? These questions and many more are never answered, but they do keep you laughing for the 86 minute runtime. Just remember, if you plan on using the drinking game, be responsible and have a plan. So gather up your friends, Eat some nice food, drink some nice drink, and have a good time. Well, thanks for stopping by, thanks for tuning in, and come back next week as January Jingles continues. Why am I 
the darling of the Bimelit. Why does everyone fall at my feet? Could it be because I'm so sincerely sweet? Yes, I know how to be a master. Ooh, Cultivate the need. Ooh, Grab them by the greed. Ooh, Slaves are guaranteed. When you know how to be a master.